what's uh, uh who's the other guy who was talking at Genelec? I think you would love to talk to these Genelec guys. Oh, There's what, a, that old dude. No, uh, the, 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 yeah, yeah. When I mentioned uh, Doctor Sean Olive. Oh yeah, that guy. He's like, oh, well, he was my, he was my student. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to cause any drama here. I don't he want to. He was like, he's my about. student, and you know, you know, uh, what did he say? He said something about uh, we gave him gave a PhD, PhD anyway. anyway. Like, he said I don't think you gave him one. I think he pretty much earned it. But yeah, I anyway, but it's weird. It, it was a, it was a, he was oh, weird kind of joking. So you got to take it in context. Oh, okay. Yeah, he if like, he's making a joke around. about it, then he definitely yeah. said he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You started off like you know, it's kind of like when you you have rapport with somebody, you can joke around. If you yeah. don't understand yeah. the relationship, then it can be taken out of context. But I don't think he said it. He, I don't think he was like being disrespectful or anything. No, like that. I don't but think so either. He was, was just saying. Funny. So this guy, uh, do you know who George Mossenberg? Doesn't ring a bell to me. Okay. So Grammy award-winning record engineer and inventor. So I had to look him up. And it says that, what is this? In 1973, wait, no, hold on. Where is it? He, basically, he, where's the white paper? Um, oh, no. Uh-oh. No, I'm not going to bring up the white paper. Not but the colored paper. <laughs> Colored paper. Oh, God. I can't say oh, stuff like no. that, man. <laughs> what did I just say? Dude, you're about to be canceled. Do? I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> uh, what are you people talking? You people. Technology <laughs> Hall of Fame is 1969 invention of the ITIME 230 parametric equalizer. Yeah. Oh. Okay. He like, invented the equalizer, not invented. He invented. Oh. He, he invented the equalizer. It seems like it uh, he, uh, authored a technical paper entitled Parametric Equalization, which was presented in the 42nd Convention of AES 1972. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty awesome. I, yeah. I wish I would have known that. I could have talked to him about some Magic Bean stuff and, you know, PEQ and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. And and here, so the, the going back to what was that? Uh, said earlier, he attended Baltimore Polytechnic Institute and Johns Hopkins University, majoring in electrical engineering. As a sophomore, he left the university and never returned. Hmm. Yeah, he just he he dropped out. Yeah, he drop out. Yeah, but I think he also teaches. Uh, associate professor of sound recording at Solik. I don't know. What that is at McGill University. That's a. I hear that name a lot. I do. All right. When that's you're reading those. Books. Yeah, that's, I know for that. I know that name from the books, uh, but in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So he teaches uh, at all these places, you know. Anyway. Um, oh, so it's a uh, it's McGraw Hill is, oh, the, is the school book thing. That's what I, I was thinking. McGill was a school oh, book. It's yeah. McGraw Hill. OK, there's so our audience doesn't think we're completely stupid. <laughs> What's he got talking about? Mildly stupid. Just mildly. yeah, just a little bit on the dumb scale, you know. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. It looks like he didn't. Does he have his PhD? He doesn't have his PhD. I'm guessing. But he no. invented a parametric EQ, or yeah. you know, was played a big role in it at least. I don't know the exact details, but I think you got to be careful. Some people just prefer to make stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, sometimes. Sometimes if you want to make something that they're not teaching about, you know what I mean? So maybe this reminds me of, um, I'm, I might butcher a little bit, so I'm going to try to like paraphrase it a bit, but there's mm -hmm. a Ron White skit where he talks about his, when he married his ex-wife, how she was like loaded and her brother-in-law always bragged. And he was like, well, we have a Mercedes Benz and say like going on and on. And he's like, oh yeah, well, I'm banging your sister. <laughs> just like the ultimate <laughs> oh that's funny yeah that's a good one so oh, yeah, I, I apply totally. that that logic to my life sometimes when somebody's like mm -hmm, and i'm just like all right cool and like there's okay you're like okay yeah. i'm banging your sister Were you just you say that to people <laughs> i almost made him spit yeah they're like my sister ain't got no legs oh, oh, no. They the McGill University, uh, Dr. Sean Olive. Yeah. PhD, sound recording. He got his PhD. Yeah. Yeah. I saw on ASR one time where somebody was trying to um, diminish Sean's 
achievements by being like, his PhD is in stats or something, which I don't know what it is. I, I imagine it's more than that. But um, mm-hmm. anyway, I'm just like, what I'm, I, what I'm saying is there's always somebody trying to put somebody else down. And it's just a, it's a weird psychology thing, man. So, yeah. So what's the best thing? Being rich? Is that what the answer is? I don't, being rich and having a PhD. Huh. Rich, PhD, being famous. Like, what are the. Oh, and you got to have a guitar pool, a oh. pool shaped like a guitar. Oh, I don't yeah. know why I thought of that, but I did. I don't know. I don't so, know. other than that, <laughs> I did watch a Genelec video. That was cool. That dude was like super psyched. He had a ton of energy, man. Oh, I bet that guy really? probably runs yeah. five miles every yeah, morning. That guy. Yeah. So, he does the marketing over there. So, um, maybe some of the technical stuff I know. Yeah. Maybe you may not completely agree yeah. with, but I know, I don't care you know, I kind of, I kind of like, Hey, I just put a mic in front of them. Can we right. talk about this? So it was that sort of situation. I hear you. But a lot of cool stuff over there. And the thing I like about this versus like some of the high fi shows, there's, it's almost like there's less BS. I feel. Yeah. There's yeah, less of it. It's for the pro group. Right. And, and is it, do you tend to find, I'm asking you a question here. Yeah, not like I'm not hypothesizing, but um, yeah. do you tend to find that the pro audio segment is like more firmly rooted in reality? Uh, or did you find some p- cases where it's like, eh, that seems weird? OK, so this is my impression is that okay. the people who are not, pe- you know, this is general, but the mm-hmm. folks who are mixing and mastering, they know about as much about speakers as an average person who's going to buy speakers. They're just. What does everybody else use? You uh, know what I mean? It yeah. just so happens that the people who are making those things are concerned with accuracy. So if you're you're going to buy some Cali audio speakers because the other people are, you know, say it's good, it looks decent and it's affordable. Well, they happen to be really good also. Mm. Right. They happen to be really accurate. But then you have people who are buying some Yamaha, you know, NS10 or what, uh, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's. Because they're popular, but they don't measure well. Yeah. Do they know that it doesn't measure well? I don't know. They just sit, they see a lot of people have them, right? Yeah. So it's. I don't think that the crowd is necessarily more knowledgeable. I think the people here and you know in our group chat and you know the people who watch your videos are probably more knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. I I always like go up to you know speaker company and I start talking about directivity right away, right? Because right. it's not the thing that's usually in the spec sheet, right? Not on the website. So if I ask that and they have an answer, I'm like, oh, okay. They know. So there were a few companies that, oh, man, I'm going to save the best for last. But some of these companies make studio monitors. Mm, so some of them sounded awesome. So we had PMC. You guys have seen those, right? Yeah, I saw those. You saw the, the crazy array the of woofers on the side and stuff like that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Genelec, which is kind of the go to, right? Yeah. If you want a studio set up and you, you go to any movie studio or music recording, you're going to find some Genelec somewhere. Um, Neum- Neumann. I don't know if you say Neumann. I don't know. It's got two ends. You don't know. Neumann. Neumann. We do now. No, uh, so Sennheiser Neumann. Neumann. Where's your Neumann? Neumann. Yeah. Hey, man. Where are you echoing right. a little? I got to switch things. Uh, okay. Force so Neumann is with Sennheiser. And then, oh, the best, my opinion, Meyer Sound. Okay. Woo. Now, oh, all dude. these companies. Yeah. Hey, you hold that thought. You keep talking yeah. about it. We're gonna, I want to chime in on Meyer. Okay. So the interesting thing is, most of these companies are extremely impressive to me are heavily based on measurements, research. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not just guessing. They don't put a, a cool looking woofer. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Um, or a cool surround. I saw Serwin Vega over there. Oh, snap. Mm, it didn't feel like Serwin Vega. I, I'm just saying. I'm like, that doesn't even look like the right color. Is that the right color? <laughs> was it red around it? It looked like, like you know the shade was a little bit off. It was like a little pink. bit too, a little too neon. Um, but we got to do um, binaural recordings. 
mm-hmm. in a lot of these rooms. And I'll let Chana tell the story, but he got to play some of his test tracks, which is awesome because they were playing some, sometimes they'll play some weird stuff that you have no idea mm-hmm. if it's good or not. Um, but yeah, they were definitely pushing Dolby Atmos. You know, they want people to start using that, um, making content in that. Uh, what else? Yeah, there was some cool, cool mixers, cool people, like professionals, like people who made some crazy recordings. Um, who's this other guy? Um, the guy who mixed Justin Timberlake, and I, I, I put it in my video, and just a bunch of people that you would recognize. Okay. So he showed off his Atmos mix. And the cool thing is you get to see where they're placing things because they show the render. So as as they're playing the song, you can kind of hear it all moving around. Chana, are you are you done setting up or what? He's been moving around for the past 30 minutes. You you've been moving around for the past 30 minutes. Are you set up yet? I've been moving, moving, moving. Come on, man. Moving around your broom. Okay. Here I am. Here you, I got am. Play, you got to play right. some of your uh, Atmos tracks, I was saying. Oh, yeah. I could hear you, though. I had That's why I had the laptop on. I could hear you. That's why I was echoey. Uh, <laughs> yes. Got to play some of my Atmos ADMs. ADM, you guys, is the Atmos master file. And uh, Sunday. Sunday! 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 That was the day where I got to, like, really play a lot of them because nobody was there. Nobody's there Sunday. Um mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, Neumann, I still wasn't able to get into the Neumann room to play my ADMs because they're still... F- so they have these rooms um, that are set up for presentations. So like uh, what Joe was saying, Jimmy Douglas in the Neumann room. Man, I have not seen an Atmos mix like that. Psh, that was great. This is Justin Timberlake. What was it? Was it Girlfriend? or? Yeah, he played a few of the tracks, but... He when we asked him like why did you decide to move it like that or somebody asked him and he was just like I was showing somebody else and it sounded cool so I just kept I just it went with it yeah so that's pretty cool like yeah. how do you know where to move stuff he's like I don't know I just I just listen I was I just around. you gotta listen man you gotta listen I, that guy sounded like he was high the whole time like it was like <laughs> yeah man like he was talking he was just hearing him talk about uh you, <laughs> you would know great like I uh, that that's my kind of dude like yeah he just <laughs> went with he just he just goes with the flow he's like that he's not taking it too seriously he's just this is what it sounded like this is kind of like what i did this is my mm-hmm. thought process and then that was it you know i just that he said i was just trying to show this guy and he did this weird like shape down the middle of the renderer with yeah. one of the sounds it was like this curvy thing it's probably drawing stuff yeah that's it he was just he was messing around right and uh he showed somebody they're like well this is what i can do with it and then all of a sudden he uh he removed that and he listened to the mix again he's like wait no i should put that back in he's like oh this is it you know like it was like complete accident um Mm -hmm. it was actually it was actually pretty cool you know um it reminds me of me doing that stuff where i'm just like oh like let's put this here let's put that there it's like uh who is it tim tim's like here have that sound go from the back wall all the way through to the front i'm like oh okay yeah let's do that hmm All right, everybody, we do the Daily Hi-Fi podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi, and we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.